again. Can you believe it's the last day in our first week? It's going by so quickly. I've had so much fun this week and I cannot wait for next week when we go over our nature projects. So let's go ahead and wrap up uh, our design and style stat on design week with um, our pop art word. Okay, so pop art words became famous in the 1960s by a man named Roy Lichtenstein. Um, and he kind of used uh, pop art words um, to be the center and the focal point of his art. So sometimes you'll see this a lot in cartoons or like old movies, like action movies, like Batman and stuff like that, superheroes, comic books. And in the English world, we call this onomatopoeia. So onomatopoeia is a word that represents a noise or sound made by something else. So instead of uh, trying to give you guys examples, I decided I'm going to show you a quick video that will give you some idea of what you're going to be need to, uh, need to do for today's project. Uh, before I do that, though, let's go ahead and go over what you're going to need today. Pencil, always. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I already have these out, but there's no shame in just have, keeping them out because you might use them today as well. Uh, our paintbrush and water for our glue. Of course, our glue, which we know by day five, lids on, we're not using it in the Ziploc baggie. Our scissors, which are still in their nice little case when we're not using them. Construction paper, and you get to pick any color you want today. And last but not least, either your zoo book or your National Geographic um, pages here. Uh, you feel free, you can use um, really any magazine or book uh, but you are going to be cutting it up. So that's the reason we gave you guys some that we had that we no longer needed. Uh, because we don't want you ruining something at home that might be important to your parent or your sibling or yourself. Um, but if you have some, you know, newspapers or magazines or books that you don't mind uh, tearing pages out of and cutting up, and you have that permission, feel free to use those as well. All right. So now for the good stuff. I'm going to go ahead and show you this video, and then we'll get started on our work. Ring, ding a pong, ooh, blush, pop, bang, splash, uh, ooh, eat, crack, click. Pretty neat, huh? So the first thing you have to decide is which word you are going to use. So you're going to focus on that word, that example of onomatopoeia um, or that sound word, since that's a kind of a funny, funny word for it. So I'm going to use pow because my last name is Powers and pow kind of goes along with that. So you're going to take one piece of construction paper okay, and then you are going to Take out your zoo book or your magazine, your newspaper, whatever it is that you have available to you or that you want to use from here. And you are going to cut out just clips of words. All right, since onomatopoeia is the focus of a word that's a sound, um, we're going to go ahead and make our onomatopoeia example stand out to other words. So I just opened up to a page that had a lot of words. And I'm just going to cut some really cool shapes. I'm going to put them to the side of my construction paper, and then we're going to glue those on in just a second. So I kind of cut my little big. I think I'm going to make it a little smaller. You really want them to look all jumbled up, right? And in, in the chaos that is our world, right? There's all sounds and all these things happening. So we want to make sure that we're representing how important this one word is in our our universe here. And when I say our universe, I mean like our artwork. Because we are the ones deciding. So I'm gonna, there's a page about bats. I'm gonna cut out that. Again, focusing really on the words. I know there's a lot of pictures if you have a zoo book. I'm gonna focus on those words. No one's actually gonna read it because it's just gonna be a visual effect. And I think it's really important too, um, if you look back at uh, the original artist, uh, Roy Lich uh, Lichtenstein, uh, if you look back at his original work or you look at the things that were inspired by him, 
Um, it, it really focuses on color too. So any kind of old comic books or old cartoons that you've seen, they have very simple color palettes to them. And so the idea is that we're using these like black and white, just plain print type. And then we're gonna make our onomatopoeia word pop. No pun intended. We're gonna find ones that have like, there we go. Any kind of, you know, just a plain background, some words. That should be good. I'm gonna get one more out of this. Boom. Yeah, I'm just full of onomatopoeia today. So we don't need our scissors just yet. We, well, we still need them, but it's not right now. We don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna take my construction paper. I'm gonna get my glue out. My paintbrush. And then my paper's kind of curled. I'm sure yours is too. So I'm gonna flip it over just so that the, the curling part's here and flatten a little bit. And then again, we're not using a ton of glue. We're not going crazy, but in the middle of our paper, I'm just going to make a spot. So I'll show you that. That's kind of what I have so far. Take a break from the glue and I'm gonna start taking these pieces and just randomly placing them in the center of my paper. And they can go every which way. Again, we're kind of focusing on that chaos. When you see onomatopoeia in a cartoon or a movie or a comic book, it's usually when intense things are happening. So whether it be, I know Kung Fu Panda, there's like a, a you know a fight scene where they're talking about an ancient animal um, who defeated all these different warriors. Uh, well, fight scenes are pretty intense, and so we want to make sure that we're um, we're, we're kind of creating the the chaos that's happening to put that focus, that no, uh, sound word, into focus. So again, does it? They don't have to be facing the same way. They're kind of going every which way on my paper. No one. It's not, not for reading purposes, for visual appeal. It's kind of like your own little puzzle. You're kind of making it the way you want to make it. And then I don't have a ton of room beyond there, but I do still have an extra piece. I'm gonna cut it into two smaller pieces just to make it fit a little bit better. And I'm kind of just, I'm still being careful, again, using, uh, if you have a parent or guardian there to help you, my make it a little safer, a little easier. But I'm just cutting some really jagged edges. Oh, I should go on that side. So it really looks like an action scene. Perfect. And if you don't use all your words, that's fine. You can always keep them for later too, who knows? Like you might stick them in your random bag, could use that as well. So now I have this page and all these words are all jumbled up and no one could actually read this. If you handed this to someone and said, what is this about, right? It would take a moment to process what kind of words they see or what sentences they could make out. But since I got them from different pages and stuff, it would just be kind of chaotic, like I mentioned. So I'm gonna set this aside for now. And then I'm going to take a different piece. Uh, this was the other half of paper that I used for my yarn painting. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna make this my pow paper. So we don't need the glue anymore if you want to stick that. Oh, you will need it, excuse me. You will need your glue, so don't worry about cleaning it just yet. I'm gonna get out my pencil and I'm gonna make some bubble letters that say POW. Now I prefer bubble letters because I've been doodling since I was little. If bubble letters are not your specialty, you can write it however you want and then just outline it. See that? It's hard to see. I'm going to outline it in black because we're going to cut those letters out. So again, a lot of cutting today. Please, please, please ask a parent or guardian or older sibling if you're having trouble cutting. I want, you to, I want to stay safe. So mine kind of overlapped a bit, and then that's fine. They don't have to. Um, If they do overlap, you can just come out as one big thing. And it, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, so I'm not cutting exactly on my black lines. Um, if you want to use a different color other than black, you can. Blue would look pretty cool, red, green. I probably should have done red. I think red would be really neat with the black background, but. So a lot of, a lot of brightness, right? You want to keep it simple um, with that, just that touch of chaos when it comes to everything else. 
So we're not going crazy with color. The hard thing about cutting out these letters is gonna be that the P and the O have um, the inside circles. So again, bubble letters, pretty simple, right? You just, you draw your letter and then you just outline outside of it. Bloop. So that leaves me with this. Now I don't have to cut out these two holes, but I can. So a good way to do this is you just fold it, cut out a little bit. Not quite like that, I didn't do a great job of this, but. And then from there, you can see there's a little bit of a hole now, I can kind of cut out the rest of that shape. And we're gonna glue it on our paper so it doesn't have to be perfect. Cut a little outside, it's not gonna be a big deal. The same thing with the O. So I'm gonna bend the O, just like so. I'm just gonna use that little cut that I made to help me clear out the rest. Voila, pow, right? So I'm trying to think what would make a pow noise. So I, I probably should have warned you in the beginning, when you pitch your noise, you kind of have to think about what is associated with that sound noise, that, that onomatopoeia example. So I'm gonna go ahead and while I'm thinking about what could be a pow noise, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to glue my pow at an angle, however you want, on top of the letters that you, or excuse me, on top of the words that you made a collage of on your original paper. You probably still have some glue on there from when you put the pieces down. So you probably don't need a ton of glue. I probably put too much. So I'm gonna put it at an angle. All right, so uh, I had to brainstorm a little bit, try and think about what kind of things uh, would be a pow, um, because I'm gonna use another piece of construction paper. So I'm gonna use blue. And when I think of pow, I think of like a firework, right? So I think I'm gonna kind of cut out, so I'm gonna use my pencil to sketch it out. Just some kind of star looking shape. Not, not just five little legs, but I'm really interested to see what everyone came up with for their words. So please, please, please share with us what uh, pop word you used. I'm gonna put my down here. And it's okay to leave some of that black background uh, because again, you're using your images, you're using um, the different shapes and uh, symbols to, to really help your word. Your word is the focus here. So you don't wanna go too crazy, too overboard. You're, you're kind of using a combination of things to help uh, drive your paper, your project. Um, I'm hoping that I can get the example on here, but I saw an example that had to do with, it was drip drop, right? You're late at night, you're drip drop. You know it's probably the sink, whether it be the kitchen sink or the restroom sink, um, some water somewhere, hopefully somewhere where it's supposed to be. So you maybe could do some right, rain droplets, right? Or, um, Let's see, what about an animal, right? Roar. That would be something a lion would make. So maybe I would do some kind of lion hair, some kind of like leaves, you know, if I was on a safari and saw um, some lions in the wild. I think I want to do another a big firework type shape up in the left hand corner. I'm going to show you guys how it looks right now, just kind of as an in between. And then I'm gonna do some tiny ones. Again, keeping it simple with the color palette. We have black, white, yellow, and blue. If you're gonna use something like pink, right? You wanna make sure you stick with other really bright colors, but you don't wanna go too crazy and mix all these different colors because that's gonna draw away from your words. So I want everyone to know what your onomatopoeia word is. Splish, splash, strip, drop. Grr, flush. Words are fun. I love art. And words are also art. So I think a lot of people forget that. We don't want to forget our words are art as well. Especially when we're using them in a cool new way. 
And then I'm gonna give myself, again, I kinda made a mess with my glue. So when I'm done, I wanna make sure I clean up that brush. I also wanna make sure that I am um, closing my little cup. And I'm gonna put this that way. So it kinda looks like it's a continuation from that one. And there you have it. Um, if you need any more tips on how to do bubble letters or anything like that, feel free to message us or talk to us. Um, but yeah, this completes our first week of art camp. So, wow, you did it. See you next week.